Well, right. pleased, pleased to be talking to Jerry Croxford in London, a uh, renowned dog punter, scourge of the bookies. I think you put the wind up, Ben, a few times as well. Um, you're good enough, just tell us where you started, please, Jerry. And uh, how did you, when did you first go dog racing? When did you first start betting? I started going to the dogs with my dad, who was a uh, avid dog man, but what what a bookmaker would call or, or, or i've been told off for saying the, the, these words before but what we'd call a mud punt or what i'd call a mud punt and my dad was a typical mud punter um used to go uh just bet whatever he fancied like uh my my, my dad used to bet place a lot like he would, would have like 10 or 20 pound a place or bet with the bookmakers 20 pound win but he was a typical mud punt and that was my first introduction to to going to 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 ground stadiums was with me me dad and then uh, my mum passed away when I was ten years old and we didn't go for quite a while and then we started my dad took me over the dogs one night with a friend of mine called Gary Daniels um, and from the first time that we went we was hooked um, I was interested in the gambling side. Gary went into owning dogs um, and he went into that side, but we continued to go together, although our inter interest was slightly different. Um, from the age of 15, I was betting with the bookies. Um, it'd be something that would be completely taboo now, a 15 year old kid betting with the bookmakers, but it was, uh, uh, at that stage, there was probably 10 or 15, of similar aged boys over the dogs that was betting with the bookies on a regular basis that we, we all used to go every single meeting um, but from a young age I loved it and I, I just had at the time it was just a knack I had a knack of picking picking winners um, would but very boom and bust in the early days like I'd be sort of up and down like sort of getting the money um, and then what a gamble on horse racing. I've seen betting shots by that stage, and what I used to win on the on the dogs, I'd be losing on the horses at that stage. But um, from a very young age, I had a great knowledge of all the dogs at Wolverhampton, and then moved on to Harringay and had a great knowledge of the dogs there. Um, and that was my early introduction to greyhound racing, really. Um, and from the age of 15, right the way through to now, um, I've gambled on dog racing. A few little blips um, along the way when I was, um, my dad passed away and I was in the antique business, I took over my dad's business. But really, I've gambled for the last um, probably 35 years. So when did the boom and bust turn into being a steady professional? Um, 20 years ago. It was a really strange. It was a really strange way that I got into betting um, on dogs professionally. Um, I started getting the, the the dog videos about twenty years ago. But as I say, I was in the antique business, um, and this is a pretty strange story. I had a I had a, a not not a great car for an antique dealer. I had a Saab convertible. Um, and I, this night I went to a, to a sale room and um, I, bought, I bought a card table out there that sort of had like five or six hundred quid of profit, like quick profit. And I, I wanted to take this, this card table, get it sold the next day to pay for the rest of the stuff that I bought out the sale room. My hood on my car was sticking slightly and I got a girl to come out and just move the like lever while I touched the, the, the back of the hood to get it down. While she was in the car, she's jammed it in gear and she completely wrote off my car, smashed it to smithereens. Um, and for that reason, I got the ump and I said, I'm not doing the antiques no more. I'm just going to go into being a dog judge. It's a lot easier. I haven't got no stress. And I just packed up being an antique dealer and I become, um, a, I won't say a professional gambler, straight away but a, a gambler showing a profit um it started off a, a gambler that was winning 
Um, purely a woven stow to start off with. Um, later on, after woven stow closed, I've become a lot more successful than when woven stow was opened. When woven stow was open. So what was it that you could see that other judges couldn't see? That's a great question, Simon. And it's a, it's a, I don't know the answer. I know it sounds really strange. I used to, um, it's, it's a little bit, I'm, 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 I don't know whether this is a good way to, to describe it. It's pretty much like the Matrix when Neo used to look at the other people and think, well, why can't you do what I can do? And it was, I would literally show the people, um, there'd always be, there, there, there would always be a theory behind my conclusion of a dog winner. It wouldn't just be, oh, I fancy trap free, I'm backing trap free. I would show the theory into backing trap free and what would be the reasons and what was going to happen. And to be a great judge, you've actually got to, You've, you've actually got to be able to know everything that's going to happen in a, in a race, especially for the first 30 or 40 metres. Um, the only thing that I don't know what's going to happen is, is how they're going to trap. I've got no... Um, I've got, like, sort of, oh, this dog's a good breaker normally, but you really don't know what's going to happen as them, them, them lids open. But um, what I used to be able to see, what everyone else couldn't see, I don't know. But there was a big difference what anyone else was seeing. Other people would find like a good bet of two to one, nine to four. Oh, this is this is a good bet tonight. But I'd be finding something at at eight to one that I was going to get my money out of. And uh, obviously, the rewards are a lot bigger when you're backing dogs at that prices. So. So how much work would you have put in before you come up with a bet? Um, it's a lot of, it always was a lot of studying. Once upon a time, um, there would literally be 20 videos over the over the floor with all dates on the, on the videos and I'd be getting out one video and putting in another video and then another video and then another video and then looking at this, yeah, it was a lot of work. Then that went on to, to, to CDs. Uh, and there, there would literally be um, CD strewn all over the floor. And then it's gone into a completely syst different system to what I've got now, which literally is at the click of a, uh, a mouse on my computer. But yeah, it would be, I'd probably have to do three hours of studying for, for, for a dog meeting, which is a lot of studying. It would be a lot of in-depth. It wouldn't just be... For me, looking at one dog's run and saying, "Oh, look, this is run really well here," it would it would be comparing dogs dogs to dogs. So dog A and dog B against dog C, which is like a common denominator that would run against both dogs. And if one of the two dogs had gone to the bend a length in front of dog C, if dog A had gone to the bend a length in front of dog C, and dog B had gone to the to the bend three lengths in front of dog C. I know that, that dog B is two lengths better to the corner than dog A. It's not really as simple as that. It could be a lot more sort of in depth as that because you'd say, oh, this dog hasn't trapped well here, but it was pretty obvious to me. Everything would stand out. Every good bet would just jump out at me. It wouldn't be hard work. Although there'd be a lot of researching, a lot of looking, it would be pretty obvious. You showed me your system earlier, and there's probably half a dozen uh, meetings on today. Yeah. So would you concentrate on just one meeting? Or? Yep. I purely, um, uh, I've, I've slowed down a lot to what, what I'm talking about when I was first doing this. And my appetite for the game wouldn't be as great as it was back then. Um, I will do some studying this afternoon, which is a Monday afternoon. Um, for tomorrow's meeting at Sunderland. Um, for the Wednesday meeting, uh, uh, all of the, the times of the meeting has a bearing. So um, I will start looking this afternoon for to tomorrow's meeting, which starts at 2.08, goes through to just after six o'clock. Um, on Wednesday, um, it's a nighttime meeting on uh, uh, RPGTV. Um, so that would be televised on a 
television channel on, on so that I can watch it on telly or on my computer. Um, Thursday is a morning meeting, so I'll probably, I'll probably get up very, very early in the morning to do the Thursday's meetings. Um, depending whether I've got um, any, any accounts that I can use to get on, like I'm sure that a lot of the people that you've interviewed have said that oh we've got people who have got um we've got people who have got uh, accounts that we use and things like that. It's not always like that. Most of my business would now be on bet uh, on Betfair, but um yeah, we do come across to, getting on in the shops is completely a waste of time. If I, I I'd have to drive for at least an hour to get to a shop where I'm not known to get a bet on, which I, I should imagine every professional gambler would be saying the same thing as that.